I'm playing a season in every FIFA game from FIFA 14 all the way to FIFA 23, and today we're playing on FIFA 21. I knew exactly who I wanted to use for this episode. We're heading to the north of England, and we're going to try and fully rebuild Newcastle United by giving them a takeover a full season earlier than it happened in real life. We're doing something a little bit different in this episode as well. Instead of just signing players who were about to join the club, like we did in the past seven games, this time we'll be fully rebuilding Newcastle with players who were linked to Newcastle, players who used to play for Newcastle, and players who actually would go on to play for Newcastle. Hopefully by the end of August, we can have a squad that's ready to compete for European football. So what record are we going to try and break this time? Well, the last time Newcastle United won proper silverware, Richard Nixon was still president in America, the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia both played in the most recent Euros international tournament, and nobody had walked on the moon. That's enough of a target. We're just going to try and break Newcastle's trophy drought in today's episode. Our first task is to force out some of the worst players of the Mike Ashley era. John Joe Shelby is the first to be transfer listed, Henri Savet is somehow still at the club, and finally a bunch of young players are going to be listed for loan. Now it's time to strengthen. The first signing was pretty obvious to me. We need a midfield playmaker and a tackler, and in comes Bruno Guimaraes. Ideally, we'd be playing three up front as well, so Alex Izak will join the club. Delhi Ali is firmly on the way down in his career at this point, but he was linked to Newcastle loads this season in real life, so let's see if we can reignite his career. Trippier will also join. He did this in real life very soon to this video. Kieran Tierney was another player that nearly joined Newcastle just a few days before I made this video, so let's grab him as well. Okay, that's enough signings for now. Let's have a look at the difference it's made to our team. The Premier League's also about to start, but I think deep down we know this team probably isn't good enough for a title. Instead, we'll mainly be focusing on the two domestic cups, the Carabao and, of course, the FA Cup. Our season got off to a good start, Alanson Maximan proven how tricky he could be, before Bruno Guimaraes nearly scored one of the goals of the season from the edge of the box, so that was a win on our first game of the season. Next up was Liverpool, and this is back in the era where Liverpool were the best team in the league on FIFA. Of course, Virgil van Dijk, Mohamed Salah and Roberto Firmino, we're playing with competitor mode on, so all of them are just doing crazy dribbles and it's almost impossible to actually tackle them. It doesn't matter though because Almiron would burst down the right, beat the defence and smash it into the corner. Man, just looking back at some of these clips just reminds me of how fun it was to actually play FIFA 21. Long shots were kind of overpowered again, just like FIFA 19. The players could move around the pitch and even though the AI was still just as overpowered as it was on FIFA 20 where it would have two or three shots and they would just laser into the corner like that, it was actually just a really fun experience to play this game again. Anyway, we went on to lose to Liverpool and we were going to try and bounce back. We're at home against Arsenal and we have a ton of former Arsenal players in our squad. Willock and Tierney both desperate to impress in this game. Anyway, we had two early chances and both of them we got kind of unlucky with. This ricochet fest right here was a bit like a pinball machine somehow didn't end up in the net. But thankfully, Chris Willock would be one on one and he would find that net. We'd already learned from our mistakes against Liverpool. We're not going to try and hold on and keep this 1-0. We're going to go for more goals. Almiron would beat Leno, and that would be 2-0 just before half-time. You always hear commentators say that's the best time to score or the worst time to concede, because usually it'll mean you go on to score a few more in the second half. Well, we really should have had a chance there, but that was a terrible first touch from Willock. Bruno Gomez, you can see how Arsenal have pushed all their men forward, found Izak, and that was 3-0 after 62 minutes. Out of all the players that we signed, and even the ones that were already at the club, I don't think any of them were as fun to use as Alexander Izak. His height, his pace, his finishing, and weirdly his agility and skill moves, they were all absolutely amazing. While Maximan was probably faster and better at skills, there was just something a bit more fun about using Alexander Izak. You saw some of his technique right there, scoring a nice overhead kick, and with just a few minutes left in the game, we had someone through the middle, it was Callum Wilson, he would tap it straight past Leno, we bounced back from a loss against Liverpool by destroying Arsenal 5-1. That meant we had six points from our first three games and it was already time for the Carabao Cup to start. This is really the one we're focusing on. The FA Cup's too far away and the Premier League's going to be too difficult, but the Carabao Cup really could be for us. We scored two really nice goals. This Delhi Alley goal, absolutely amazing. I love the way it bounces off the crossbar and goes in. I think we were now only five games away from the final, so this really could be our season. 
So it was also deadline day and look at some of the signings these other AI teams have made. I like Grealish going to Man City. That was something that AI just decided to do. Ours, of course, absolutely insane. We spent 172 million, but no one was more expensive than Harry Kane going to Real Madrid. It was a signing that really could have happened in real life this summer. But as we sold Henry Seve, we also signed Matt Ritchie. It was time to re-sign someone I really enjoyed playing for Newcastle. Hatton Ben Arfa is a magpie. He's only probably going to play in some cup games here and there, but five-star skills, hopefully he's just as fun as he used to be on the game. He's not playing in this game against Fulham, where we went 1-0 down just before half-time, and this was probably one of the biggest proofs that AI is so random when it comes to difficulty on FIFA 21. We just beat an Arsenal 5-0, and it looked like we were getting absolutely destroyed by Josh Meyer. So this guy is about 72 rated. He's going to score four now. And with a couple of minutes left, he's going to also score a fifth goal. In this game, Fulham had six shots. Josh Meyer had five shots and Josh Meyer got five goals. I'm not going to complain too much though because our defending was really bad in that match. And we definitely have to step up our defending in our next match, which was in the Carabao Cup third round against Liverpool, a team that already beaten us. So we knew just how tough this game was going to be. In fact, Liverpool got a chance super early on, but Dubravka was there with a great save off Firmino. Almiron would go around Alisson. He'd try and chip it up to Isaac, but Virgil would leap highest and he would just head that out. Maximan would go on a nice dribble and then he would slot one past Alisson. 30 minutes gone and we were already 1-0 up and it got a little bit better just before half time. Isaac passing it to Deli Ali. He would smash it past Alisson and 2-0 up. But then Liverpool would go full Barcelona, four one-touch passes and Mane was in an open goal. He's never going to miss that. They had another chance, this time Mane jumping highest from a corner. A goal that Stoke would have been proud after a goal that Barcelona would have been proud of. We nearly made a massive mistake here with Tierney, but he just about rescued the situation and the ball would end up falling to Callum Wilson one-on-one. -on -one. He's got to be finishing that against Nat Phillips. You'd imagine he's got a bit more pace. However, he does finish that. A much harder finish, but what a finish it was. The game would end 3-2 and we were through into the fourth round. So after facing Brighton, Premier League Brighton in the second round, after facing Premier League Liverpool in the third round, we were now playing against Premier League West Bromwich Albion in the fourth round. They had a crazy team. I didn't realise they had Maitland Niles and Conor Gallagher at the same time. That midfield was actually quite tough to play against. That was a totally unnecessary skill move there from Alan Sam Maximan, but I really can't resist when I've got the him with the ball. I just want to do skill moves, you know. There's something so fun about his like pace, his agility, his five-star skills. He's just a really fun player to use on FIFA 21. Anyway, West Brom would get an equaliser. We'd put a cross in. It would actually fall to send Maximan instead of Andy Carroll. So Andy Carroll would have to wait a few more minutes to get his first Newcastle goal for a long, long time. He would tell the crowd, it's time for you to calm down because Newcastle are through into the fifth round. Back into the Premier League though, things were going pretty well. We did lose this game against Tottenham. That was such a good goal we just conceded right there. Alanson Maximan would keep cutting in from the wings, trying to score montage-worthy goals from someone like FIFA Rally. And even though we did get the three points in this game, there was also some bad news. Callum Wilson was playing at front for us now because Alexander Izak had actually got a pretty bad injury. He was going to be out for two months, so that meant we had to use Callum Wilson in all the Premier League games because he's the better striker, but we would use Andy Carroll exclusively as our cup striker. He did miss a chance right there, he just let the ball go straight through his legs, and this is of course the fifth round game against Chelsea. Bruno Gmeris would turn, he would find Hatton Ben Arfa, who again was playing in the middle because Arsenal have decided to revoke Chris Willock's loan for his not playing him, despite him playing in most of the games this season. Look at this hold-up play here from Andy Carroll. He knew what he was doing. Hurt Zuma couldn't even get near the ball, and Gomeris was through on goal. Oh, he's really got to be beating Mendy right there. Mendy's not even that highly rated on this game. Chelsea would have an attack. It was really bad defending, and Pulisic would smash it past. Of course, former player Pulisic from our time managing Dortmund. Timo Werner would also score a rare Chelsea goal, so he'd put them 2-1 up. It was three goals within 30 minutes, so this was a really amazing match, really. Almiron had a chance before half-time. He would make it 2-2, so that meant we just needed a single goal in this second half. Bruno Gomeres would get through on goal, and he would finally beat Mendy. He probably should have done it earlier in the game, and now we were going to try and sit on this win. We were going to defend for all we could. Jeff Hendrick had been brought on in midfield, and Andy Carroll had a chance to finish the game. He does one of the slowest skill moves of all time. Then the fastest touch. Oh, that would have been montage worthy there from Andy Carroll. But unfortunately for us, it would be 3-2. Could we just hold on these last few seconds? Woot Weghorst had come on for Chelsea. Can he play it through? He can't. 
Lewis is there, and that would mean we were through into the next round of the cup, which was the semi-final against Leicester City. Leicester, of course, being the place where I live in real life, and also the team that we managed for two seasons earlier in this series. Our team was nowhere near as good as it is now, though. Of course, we did sign Madison and Tielemans for them, but we definitely didn't sign Alaba. We definitely didn't sign Jenny at the back. Christian Fuchs is now playing right centre-back, so we had a really good chance. And this was actually the first game where Alex Izak was fit enough to come on the bench. Could he make a difference as a substitute? He's made a massive difference as a starting player throughout this season. This is the problem with playing against Leicester City. They have three or four players that do dribbling like this. Like, they're just trying to win a penalty. They want you to try and dive in, and all they end up doing in the end is running off the pitch. When Carrera stops practicing his skill moves, he is actually really good at football. He chips our goalkeeper right here, puts Leicester 1-0 up, but this is a two-legged tie. No matter the result, we're heading to Leicester in just a few days. Look how annoying this is, by the way. Through on goal, we get taken out right there. Wilson totally put on the floor. Not even a foul. Anyway, we had to go and buy Chris Willock. He was too good in our midfield and the loan had expired, so we just went and paid a decent amount of money to sign him full-time from Arsenal. This was exciting. Alexander Izak, he's returned from injury, he's back on the pitch and he's ready. He'd get on the ball straight away. He'd play through Andy Carroll, but Carroll was more interested in barging Alaba out of the way rather than shooting. Carroll would get another chance in front of his home fans and that would be it. That could potentially be the winner with just five minutes to go. The Newcastle fan has scored in front of the Newcastle fans and that could even be the goal that takes us through into the final. We just have to hold on now. The game should have ended. We've played more than extra time and Carrera has managed to score one minute after the game should have ended. Leicester have got their own dramatic equaliser. And that's how the game would finish. We were now heading to Leicester. We were in the Midlands. Maximan would go round two. He'd go around the goalkeeper and he'd think he's been taken out. He has. That's going to be a penalty. So this is a great start for Newcastle. Deli Ali converts and we're 3-2 up on aggregate. Awesome start. Great penalty there from Deli Ali. And what a run it was from Maximan to beat those three players. Tierney would get on the ball. He's got Maximan. He's absolutely destroying Daniel Amati down the right. Passes it through to Deli Ali, I think. And what a shot that is. Deli Ali's on fire. Maximan is on fire. And it looks like Kasper Schmeichel might also be on fire. Callum Wilson gets the ball. He's got Deli Ali again. Can he beat Daniel Amati? He just needs a little bit more pace. Cuts back inside, does a trick. And that's off the post. There's this really cool thing in FIFA 21 I've noticed where the more you learn about a player, the better you can play with them. That's absolutely the case with me and Deli Ali. But it looks like it's also the case with the AI and James Madison. He's dribbled around two or three players. That's Leicester's only shot of the half. And it's the equaliser. Can we keep pushing on? Because clearly we are the dominant team in this game. Maxim Mann gets another chance. Another chance. So Michael just about keeps it out. This is turning into such a cool game. Bruno Gameres. He finds Jeff Hendrick. And I think that's his first and possibly only goal of the season right there. Of course, a player from the Midlands. He used to play for Derby County. So maybe he feels at home playing in Leicester. But can Andy Carroll finish the game off? Oh, not quite. Shamichael is just about able to stop it. But that means one thing. We're through into the final. Who are we going to be playing? The other leg was Burnley against Manchester City. And I think you can all guess which team we're going to be playing. It's going to be Manchester City who have won 5-2 on aggregate. So they've got goals in them. But we've won 4-3 on aggregate. So we've got goals in us as well. I think Man City's danger man is a tall blonde striker who used to play from Dortmund. And it's not Erling Haaland. Of course, it's Kiro Immobile. Andy Carroll has finally been booted out. It's time for Alexander Izak to leave Newcastle. Hopefully to their first trophy since the 1960s so the game is officially underway now an early chance here for Manchester City after two minutes corner comes in from De Bruyne but De Bravka heads it away and it's good block there from Lascelles I think the first 10 minutes was actually a lot more even than I was expecting we got this good chance here he's like turned his man but Edison is a much better goalkeeper than De Bravka it's gonna stay nil nil there was this chance here Grealish would play it through to Immobile and that would be one nil a gutting goal to concede we do have pretty slow defenders, but it hasn't really hurt us until right there. Isaac would get a chance, but Laporte was more than good enough to stop that one. Ali would win it back, and Joe Linton would be ambitious. Yeah, I think about now is the time we wish Joe Hart or Claudio Bravo was in goal instead of Edison. Immobile would see that the Brav crew come off his line. It was a nice chip, and all of a sudden, we were looking like we were going down without a trace. Deli Ali, though, into the box would give us a lifeline. 
half an hour gone, 2-1. We did have a chance in this game still. We're just proven we can score actually quite easily against Manchester City. And all of a sudden, Almiron is through on goal. He scored several from there throughout the season, but Phil Foden tracks back and blocks the shot. Fran Torres gets into the box and he's absolutely done me there with that trick. That was amazing from the AI. That's like something Division 1 of Ultimate Team would have done. And it's 3-1 to Manchester City. We still have chances though. Still half a game to go. Almiron, again, really should be scoring that. He scored several from that area in the rest of the season. But that will be half time. Going in 3-1 down. It's not the end of the world. Manchester City there, you can see. Five shots, five on target, three goals. They're in one of those moods that the AI can get into. I believe in us to do a comeback. Well, I did until Fernandinho scored this one to make it 4-1 just before the hour mark. Isaac there fluffed the chance. Really, he should be shooting, but it just got stuck under his feet and Manchester City would defend. I thought we were through here. That could have been 4-2. This is the game still on if we score there, but it's possibly the closest offside I've ever seen on FIFA. Man City would keep attacking. This is pure pet ball right here. The lap would come off the bench. He looks a bit like Haaland and he does a very Haaland-like shot there. Fernandinho would secure a central defensive midfield hat trick. And with the game in stoppage time, Marez absolutely kills it off. 7-1. My head is firmly in my hands. I can't believe what I've just done. We've been absolutely tonked by Manchester City in this final. It's pure pet ball, like we said earlier. His passing was amazing. All of their shooting, if it was on target, the Bravka just didn't have a chance. Bruno Gomeris couldn't win the ball back. You can see how disappointed he was right there. And even though they were actually kind of easier than Leicester City to play against, we absolutely collapsed and we really did deserve to lose that final. We still had some Premier League games to go. Of course, we were potentially going to be in the Champions League with Newcastle, which was a massive improvement of what they did in real life. And while we watch the final match of the season here against Burnley, let's just reflect on some of the coolest things that are in FIFA 21 that I haven't really seen in FIFA 22 or FIFA 23. So the squad building is actually pretty interesting. You can see right here, you might have noticed Burnley have Olivier Giroud and Chris Wood up front. That is the most Burnley front two I think I've ever seen. Harry Kane going to Real Madrid, Jack Grealish going to Man City. I just feel like the AI was slightly better at that kind of stuff back then. Anyway, have a think about who you'd like me to use for FIFA 22 because I'll make that episode over the next week and hopefully we can get them both out before EA Sports FC comes out. So if you enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more FIFA content very soon, please press subscribe and like this video and thank you all for watching. Cheers and goodbye.